sous vide is a cooking technique that uses a precise water temperature to cook foods through perfectly and make recipes foolproof. We often use it for things like poached eggs or the ultimate steak. But there are a handful of recipes that can only be done with sous vide, like a medium rare pot roast, which is what Dan's gonna show us how to make today. So Julia, chuck roast is one of the beefiest cuts mm. on the cow, right? We absolutely love it. We grind it into burgers, we make pot roast out of it. You'd never in a million years imagine that we would put it as the centerpiece on a holiday table. No, because right? if you cook it medium rare, it would be tough and chewy. Right, so what we're gonna do through the power of sous vide, which is really, really amazing, is we're gonna cook this thing medium rare, edge to edge. It's gonna be as tender as prime rib, but it's gonna be even beefier. So we're gonna start with a five pound chuck roast here, and it often has a layer of fat down the middle. Mm -hmm. And the meat will actually pull apart at these natural seams pretty easily, so you kind of start separating with your hands a little bit, and you can see it right there. Then I just grab my knife, and I'm gonna use the knife as, as little as I need to, basically. A lot of pulling, that means it will come apart perfectly at that seam. So we'll just separate it out, and really the only reason we're doing this is we wanna access these pockets of fat and get rid of some of the bigger ones. Beautiful, that looks great. So another really nice benefit of taking this apart here is we're gonna season this with salt, and this gives us a ton more surface area to season. So I have four teaspoons of kosher salt, and I'm just gonna let it rain down all over this guy. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is put this back together now. I'm gonna set this aside and get my strings ready. So we're gonna tie this back together. There's a lot of ways to do it. I like to lay it out ahead of time, and then you just pop your roast on top of it. We want about an inch apart. So now I'm gonna put the roast presentation side down. And then I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna come up and over, and then I'm gonna do a double twist. Nice secure way to do it. It mm -hmm. kind of locks it in place so that it holds it for you pretty nicely. Yep. When you go back to do your second one, it's still nice and tight. Okay, so now I'm just gonna trim off the little extra bits of twine on here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna wrap it up in plastic now. I'm gonna transfer it to a plate. We're gonna go in the fridge for at least 24 hours up to 96 hours. So our roast sat in the fridge for about 48 hours, so it's really well seasoned. So we'll pat it dry with some paper towels real quick. In the meantime, I've got my skillet over here with two tablespoons of oil, and I'm heating that up over medium high heat. So I see some whiffs of smoke. We're gonna get our roast in there now. Smoking hot. Smoking hot. So I'm gonna start on the side actually, and then kind of let it roll down. And we're gonna sear for about six to eight minutes. We wanna get beautiful browning all over it. All right. Okay, that is gorgeous browning. We've done that on all sides, that final side. You wanna make sure you get your ends Ooh, too. Looks beautiful. That's gorgeous. Awesome, so we're gonna transfer it over to our plate here. I'm gonna season it with pepper now, about one and a quarter teaspoons. Okay, so now it's time to start really cooking this thing. <laughs> so we're gonna reach for our trusty freezer bag. We're gonna be sous vide and we need to have a plastic barrier around the meat so that it's not in contact with the water. We wanna use a zipper lock bag, which is easy to get in and out of, and the freezer bags are a lot sturdier. So what I like to do is open it up and then make a little cuff on it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna transfer this in there, it's gonna get messy, and if you get it inside here, you can make that seal a little bit messy. This isn't even that hot, no need to use tongs. And then I'm just gonna give it a little turn here so that it fits in snugly. We're gonna start pressing some air out. Air is a really good insulator. It's gonna affect how evenly this cooks. Ideally, there's no barrier other than that thin piece of plastic between the meat and the water. So I'm gonna squeeze out as much as I can and just kinda of work my way up and start sealing it. We're gonna come over to our water bath here. So we have our immersion circulator circulating here, and this is a 12-quart container. You need something large enough because you're cooking something pretty big. Right. This is set at 133 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty low. But it's the final temperature we want this roast to be. We're gonna leave it in there 18 to 24 Ooh. hours. When we normally cook this roast, we cook it at pretty high temperatures because we want to break down all that tough collagen into mm -hmm. nice tender gelatin, right? And that happens pretty rapidly at say 180 or 190 degrees. A couple of hours, it's tender. We're going much, much lower, but we can actually get that same collagen conversion. It just takes much, much longer. A so, whole day. A whole day, basically. <laughs> yep, so what we're gonna do is pop it in here. The water mm -hmm. pressing against the plastic, it's gonna displace some of that air. And as that air climbs to the top of the bag, I'm gonna open up one <laughs> little bit here. We're gonna use that cool water displacement to help get rid of the last bit of air in there. So you want that nice and closed. And then I've just got a little binder clip here. Mm -hmm. You just wanna make sure that this doesn't, during the long cook, fall off. I'm also gonna put a cover on it. So we're gonna have some evaporation. Enough evaporation that it could go down too low. And we don't want that to happen. It's also gonna make it easier for the machine to maintain 133 degrees. Now the question I'm sure everyone's asking is, is this a safe cooking technique? Because that's a low temperature for a long time. It is, and the key is really this combination of time and temperature. So 133 degrees is very, very low, but because we're going so long, we actually kill bacteria very slowly over time. So it's really totally safe to eat, even after a few hours in this kind of bath. So it's totally safe when it comes out. All right, so 24 hours. So we're gonna go 24 hours, and you're gonna see the best chuck roast you've ever seen. Can't wait.
Okay, so this has gone for 24 hours. We have an amazing transformation happening mm. inside the bag that I'm excited for you to see. So I'm gonna take this roast out of the bag here and I'm putting it onto a wire rack that's set in a rim baking sheet. I have a sheet of foil under there and I've sprayed the rack with cooking spray so it doesn't stick. So we're gonna let this rest for about 10 to 15 minutes here just to help it kind of evaporate off some of that moisture. We're gonna pat it dry before it gets a gorgeous, gorgeous mustard, rosemary, peppercorn crust. It has really, really bold flavor and to match that, we're gonna make this awesome yogurt sauce. Ooh. I love this on basically any roast but it's gonna be really killer here. So we've got two cups of whole milk yogurt here. Now you want that richness, you don't wanna go with low fat or non-fat. I also have a quarter cup of minced parsley. We also have a quarter cup of minced chives. I have two teaspoons of lemon zest. We're also gonna add a quarter of a cup of lemon juice. So have some nice acidity to match that yogurt acidity. And then finally, two minced garlic cloves. All right, so just whisk this together. Just so gonna hit it with a little bit of kosher salt and some pepper. Ooh, that looks good. That looks nice, This right? is my kind of sauce, I have to say. Awesome. All right, so I have a little plastic here. We really want the flavors to meld a bit. We'll let this sit in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. So you might have thought that what we're doing in the sous vide bath, that was the big story for this <laughs> recipe, right? This crust could totally steal the show. Oh, really? Yeah, it's really, really awesome. We're gonna start with some mustard seeds and I have a quarter cup here. It's gonna go into my trusty spice grinder. I also have three tablespoons of black peppercorns. These also have texture and a little bit of flavor. All right, so I want these to be coarsely ground, so I'm gonna do kind of pulses and a little bit of shaking. It's gonna look like a weird dance. <laughs> All right. You gotta put your hips into it if you're gonna dance. I'm not a big hip dancer. All right, so here we go. So we've got this mixture here. We're gonna transfer it to this shallow dish and we're gonna stir in rosemary. So I've got mm. a third of a cup of finely chopped rosemary. We're also gonna add two tablespoons of flake sea salt. Ooh. It's gonna add tons of flavor and texture. So we're just gonna mix this together. I like to use my hands. Okay, so we want this to stick to that and the key to that is this egg white. So we're just gonna do about 30 seconds of whisking here. Great, nice and foamy. So I've patted my roast nice and dry. And you're leaving the twine on, I wanna point out. That, that's true, I'm gonna leave it on right until the very end when we actually slice and serve this, and that way it holds it together. So I'm gonna use my pastry brush here and just paint it all over. So now we'll just take this and press it in over here. This dish makes it nice and easy to get ah. lots on there. So this roast is ready to go into the oven. It's gonna be a 475 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And rotate it halfway through and we're looking for this to be really aromatic, really, really beautiful and golden brown. This thing is cooked through. We don't need any interior cooking. We just want that crust to set and be really beautiful. Oh. Ooh, does that look pretty or what? That's a beauty. It smells good too, doesn't it? It does. Oh, well that sure turned around. Right? <laughs> So let's transfer this right over to our carving board here. Oh, beautiful. Yes, please. So here's the crazy thing is we don't have to let this rest at all. That's crazy. It's really cool, right? Yeah, because we cooked at such a low temperature, all the carryover cooking that was ever gonna happen is done at this point. Wow. And the time in the oven is so short, there's no need to do it. Wow, I love it. Look at that. Goodness. You ever seen a chuck roast that looks like I've that? I've never <laughs> seen a medium rare chuck roast before. I mean, this knife just, I'm barely doing anything. It just glides right through it. Can I serve you some? Please. All right. And I'm gonna pull off just a little bit of twine that we still have on there. Helps it hold together during the slicing, which is really nice. All right, transfer a nice chunk over to you oh, here. thank you. There we go. Gorgeous. Nice. All right, would you like a little sauce yes, too? Yes, of course. There you go. Ugh. Look at that. Mmm. Mm-hmm. So tender. It's beefy. It has more flavor than a roast beef I've ever had before. It mm. just tastes like good beef. And the flavor of that crust with the mustard seeds and the rosemary, it's beautiful. So good. This is amazing, Dan. Well done. Thank you. So there you have it. If you want to try something new with your sous vide machine, try a chuck roast. Pull the roast into two pieces, then trim, season with salt, and tie it back together. Let the roast sit with the salt for at least a day, then brown on the stove top before sous vide at 133 degrees for 18 to 24 hours. To finish, coat the roast with a spice mixture and brown it in the oven for 15 minutes. And don't forget the yogurt sauce. So from America's Dust Kitchen to your kitchen, a killer new recipe for sous vide rosemary mustard seed crusted roast beef. Awesome. Every holiday table, right? Oh, now on. So good.
Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.